What's up guys, Stacy here from Becoming Financially Fit, and today we're gonna to be talking about a super important topic. Back in December of 2020, Congress passed a bill that added an additional 900 billion stimulus package to the original CARES Act of 2020. This is super important because there's a little clause in that stimulus package that allows individuals, American workers, to access the funds from within their 401k. This is very important because there are a bunch of changes that happen to 401k loans and 401k withdrawals as a result of the CARES Act of 2020. This is super important because it allowed millions of Americans to access the funds from within their 401ks without taking a tax hit or a penalty when they actually did a withdrawal. So I made a video when this opportunity first arose, and it was pretty much just talking about the differences between a 401k CARES Act withdrawal versus a normal 401k hardship withdrawal. And I would highly suggest before you watch this video, if you want to learn all the details about the process, the pros, the cons, the benefits, make sure you go check that video out because it literally explains everything you need to know. Once you watch that video, come back here and we'll get into the details about the extension of the 401k Act withdrawal uh, in the form of a hardship withdrawal and also in the form of the 401k CARES Act loan. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the ramifications of the bill that passed in December of 2020 that extended out the benefits of the 401k CARES Act. We're also going to be talking about some of the pros and cons and ways that you can actually access these funds. And lastly, and most importantly, we're going to be talking about the deadline to make sure you guys are entitled to these benefits if you are a worker that has a 401k out there. But before we get into the content, if this is the first time you're on my channel or if you've never seen a video like this before, I make videos about personal finance, financial literacy, savings, investing, and I also try to throw some entrepreneurship in there as well. So if you're interested in any of those topics or you want to see more videos like this in the future, make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell to be updated anytime I post new content. So for all the newcomers out there or for some of the individuals who need to be refreshed on some of the benefits of the 401k CARES Act as it pertains to withdrawals and loans is this gave access for millions of Americans with 401ks out there, retirement plans out there to access their funds. And the huge, huge benefit about this was allowing Americans to access these funds without huge taxes and huge penalties coming out up front before they even get to touch their money. So if you guys know, if you have a 401k out there, there are only two ways to access those funds, and that's through a 401k with hardship withdrawal and a 401k loan. If you take a 401k loan, you pay it back over time plus interest, but that interest goes back into the plan and that's usually paid out every time you get paid. If you were to take a 401k hardship withdrawal, there are certain criteria that you need to meet and there are certain ways that you can spend those funds. Also, there are limits on the amount of money that you could take out of your plan via a hardship withdrawal. Now, this depends on your particular plan, but on average, uh, think about this example. Let's say you had $100,000 in your plan and you're looking to access the funds uh, to go buy a new house or you know pay for medical bills or something like that. One of the categories that the hardship was actually built for. Well, there are certain limits that apply to that hardship withdrawal. One of those limits was the fact that you could only take the lesser of either $50,000 or 50% 50 of your vested balance, which means that at max, it doesn't matter how much money you had in that 401k, you could only access $50,000 of your money. On top of that, you'd be hit with a 20% tax and a 10% penalty. So even though you were taking out $50,000, you would only receive a check for $35,000, which is crazy to think about. It's actually your money, but you're only able to access a portion of it. And when you are able to access that portion, it's being taxed and you're getting hit with a penalty on top of that. So with the introduction of the 2020 CARES Act, the limit has increased. It's now the lesser of either $100,000 or 100% of your vested balance. So now that max is bumped up all the way up to $100,000, which for many Americans, it's really, really a good thing if they're looking to access those funds because of something that happened during the pandemic of 2020 and now heading into 2021. One other thing I should note about the passing of the CARES Act is the fact that these funds, when you withdraw them, you can use them for anything you want. Previously in the past with the normal hardship withdrawal, you could only use the funds for very, very specific things, whether that was college expenses or buying a new primary residence or doing rehab uh, or repairs on your primary residence, funeral expenses. There are certain things that you could spend that money on and you would have to submit paperwork and file receipts for that. But now with the introduction of the 2020 CARES Act and now the extension of that CARES Act, if you would draw funds from your retirement, like I said, you can draw up to either 
$100,000, the lesser of $100,000 or 100% of your vested balance. And these funds can be used for anything you see fit. So now we're going to get into the eligibility list. And this is super important. You can't access the benefits of the 401k CARES Act as they pertain to hardship withdrawals and loans if you don't meet one of these criteria. So let's go through them. Number one on that list, if you were diagnosed with COVID, then you are eligible for the benefits. Number two, if you had a spouse or dependent that was also diagnosed with COVID, then you're going to be eligible for the 401k CARES Act withdrawal benefits. Now let's go on to number three. If you experience adverse financial consequences as a result of being quarantined, furloughed, laid off, or having your work hours reduced, then you're also going to be eligible to receive these benefits. Now, before we go into the last two items on the list of eligibility, I want to ask you guys a question. Drop a comment below if you have actually accessed the benefits of the 401k CARES Act and have been eligible to use your funds. And if you're able to access the funds, let me know what you actually use them for. If they were you know, used to invest in a business, get an investment property, or just let me know. Drop a comment below and let me know. But let's go into number four. So the number four piece of eligibility on this list is if you were unable to work due to the lack of being able to get child care. Obviously, we all know during the pandemic, just about every single business was closed. And because of that, that included daycares um, or schools or child care centers. So if you had to miss work and stay home because of the fact that you could not find child care, then you're going to be eligible for the 401k CARES Act withdrawal benefits. Now, the fifth and final item, you experience adverse financial consequences as a result of closing or reducing hours of a business that you own or operate. So this could be in the form of a small business owner. Um, if you had a business and you either had to close it down because of the pandemic or you had to reduce your work hours because you could only be open for a certain amount of time or you had to close for an extended period of time because your city was closed, then you're going to be eligible for the benefits of the 401k CARES Act program. So now we're going to get into one of the most important things throughout this entire video. When is the deadline to actually submit your claim to receive these benefits from your 401k plan? The deadline is June 25th of 2021. So that extends it about six months, a little under six months, but it gives individuals who were not able to access the funds in 2020 from March 27th when the act initially passed up until December 31st, it gives you another six months to use these benefits if you so choose to. And now that we have all of our bases covered, I'm gonna talk at a high level about your two options, and that's the loan versus the withdrawal. Now, I made a video that talks about all the details about the loan and the withdrawal, what you should do, what you shouldn't do, some of the pros, some of the cons, the consequences of both options. But if you want to check that out and see every single detail that was in the plan, make sure you check out the video link in the description. Like I said, it goes through all the details, but this is just going to be a high level overview about the options. And we'll talk about, you know, how you can access them and use them and utilize them for your particular situation. So the main difference between the loan and the withdrawal is the fact that the loan is paid back over time. You pay it back every time you get paid, a little portion is taken out of your check. And this is predetermined when you first actually take out the loan. So let's say you take out $5,000 and you can set your time frame over you know, the course of 60 months. You might be paying maybe you know, $50 a month until that loan is paid. You can always pay it off early um, if you want to, but is it gonna be taken out of your check every time until that loan is paid off. Another important thing to note is if you leave that employer, then if you cannot pay the loan back immediately or over the course of time and keep continue continually paying that, then you're going to take a tax hit. So that's important to note. I want everybody to be aware of that. If you do leave your job while the loan is outstanding, you might be liable for taxes on the funds that you took out. Now let's go to withdrawal. So with the CARES Act withdrawal, you're able to withdraw either $100,000, the lesser of $100,000 or 100% 100 of your vested balance. And talking about your vested balance, that's the funds that are 100% vested in your 401k account. You can see this in your plan, so I would highly suggest you go check that out to see which one you're eligible for. With the withdrawal, you don't have to pay it back. You get all the money up front. There's no taxes taken out. But I want to be 100% clear on this. You will have to pay the taxes the next time you file your tax return. So even though you don't have to pay the 20% tax up front, you will have to pay that back the next time you file your taxes. So just be aware of that. 
Also, one benefit that the CARES Act enabled was the fact that you no longer have to pay a 10% penalty. And this penalty was put in place to ensure that individuals were saving for the long term for their retirement. And it was just something that deterred individuals from taking money out of their 401k through the form of a withdrawal. But now because individuals are able for the benefits under the 401k CARES Act, there's no more 10% penalty. So you're going to be saving some money if you do decide to take money out of your 401k. One other cool thing that was implemented as a result of the CARES Act was the fact that even though your withdrawal is being taken out, in the past, you weren't able to pay it back. It was just funds that were completely taken out of your 401k and you would then have to replenish them on a biweekly basis or however your plan does it when you're putting funds back in. But now with the CARES Act, you're able to actually replenish the funds into your account. And like I said, all of the details are gonna be down in the description below in the video I created that gives you an idea about how, what's your timeline on paying back the funds, uh, to not ensue taxes. How do you do that and everything like that? There's a lot of things that you can do to make sure you don't pay taxes when you're taking out with the withdrawal as a result of the CARES Act. And if you want, if you guys want to check that out, just make sure you go watch the video down in the description. So now, you know, this wouldn't be a full and concise video without giving you guys the consequences of taking money out of your 401k. There's a bunch, but I'm going to lay out a couple just so you guys are aware that if you do want to take advantage of this program, you are eligible and you actually want to use these funds. There are a couple consequences that you should be aware of. The first consequence is the fact that this money won't be working for you in the stock market. And if you look back to last year is a great example. Anyone who took advantage of this, let's say early in the year when the market had dropped a bunch, but they still wanted some of these funds. Over the 12 month period of 2020, the S&P 500 finished at a return of over 15% and the NASDAQ finished at over 40%. So if your money had stayed in your plan, you would have gained, let's say an average of 30% or even more depending on what you were invested in. But because individuals were taking money out of their 401k, even though they had access to the cash and they could do whatever they wanted with the cash, they were missing out on the benefits of the stock market. And that's the capital appreciation or the dividends that they could have received as a result of being invested. That's an important thing to note because this essentially allows you to take money away from your 401k plan. But a 401k plan was made for a reason. It's made to have funds set aside that are building and building and growing through compound interest over time for the course of 20, 30, maybe even 40 years. So when you get to retirement, you have funds, a nice little net nest egg set aside that you don't have to worry about what you're doing. But Anytime you take money out of your 401k, then you're taking money from your future self to pay for your current needs. And so when you get to retirement, if you continuously and continuously take money out of your 401k, you're not going to be able to meet the needs of retirement. So you might not be able to retire as early as you want or as early as you need to. But I just wanted to give you guys a quick heads up about the extension. I want to make sure everybody knows about it. So if you do want to take advantage of these benefits and you meet one of the criteria and you are eligible, you have all the information you need. I try to put these out as informational only. And I like I said, I gave you guys the pros and I also gave you guys the cons and the consequences of taking money out of your 401k. But if you guys have any questions, there are a bunch of questions on the last video that I made about this. Drop a comment below and I'll try to answer any questions that you guys have on this, whether that's how you know to determine if you're eligible, how to deal with your plan administrator, anything like that. If you guys have any questions, drop a comment and let me know and I'll try to get back to you. But if you got some value out of this content, make sure you give this video a like and I would really appreciate it if you guys subscribe to the channel so you can check out other videos I do like this in the future. Like I said, my channel is about personal finance, financial literacy, savings, investing, and I also try to throw some entrepreneurship in there as well. And if I see things like this in the future that will benefit masses and many Americans who have financial instruments like a 401k plan, then I'm going to put that information out there. So. I hope you guys got some value out of this and see you in the next one.